Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I'm back at my desk. I pray that you're having a great day. I haven't had a chance to speak to you from this location since December the 15th of 2022, and here we are in January of 2023, and I am honored to be speaking to you from my desk here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm smiling. I'm excited about all of the wonderful things that the God of the Bible is doing. And my friends, I pray that you're having a fantastic day. Now, one of the reasons I'm so excited is I just got off the phone from talking with the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, who is my leader. And he's leading the Church of God in Christ that I am a proud member of. I have never just been more poured into, encouraged and blessed um, uh, like I was just a few minutes ago on the phone talking with our presiding bishop. I gave him a call. I had a I had a vision of something that I wanted to do, and uh, and it was similar to something that he was doing. I called to get his wisdom on it, and that man of God just began to pour into me and my friends to just sit at the feet of my leader and to hear from him and to, uh, to be blessed by him means more to me than you will ever know. I tell you one thing, I'm proud to have him uh, as my leader and as he's leading this church from one faith level to the next, I'm telling you, I'm walking in lockstep with him and I'm, I'm appreciative to God for his leadership. And next week we will be at the National Leadership Conference and I'm going to be there with bells on to hear what my leader has to say. And I want to encourage all of our Church of God in Christ uh, credentials your holders and friends, uh, leaders and bishops, pastors and superintendents, come to the leadership conference. Our great leader has summoned us and it's going to be wonderful. Now, I'm, I'm just excited about our own in-house leadership conference that starts tonight. Garrett's going to put it on the screen there. You can see uh, it is Vision Keepers Strengthened Through Discipleship. And I am opening uh, it up tonight, and God has given me something very important to say, a teaching that will be a blessing to every church, that will be a blessing to every leader uh, in every ministry. Uh, I believe that it will be a blessing to uh, uh, us all as we study the scripture and find out uh, how to be leaders and, and, uh, and what to allow God to do in us to prepare us for being leaders in the Lord's church, in our local churches, in our jurisdictions, um, districts, local churches, at home, in society. Listen, the, 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 the teachings of Jesus on leadership are numerous. And I believe that every situation on earth, the Bible speaks to it. So I'm excited about tonight. I want to invite all of you to meet me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for our Vision Keepers uh, Leadership Summit 2023. I thank God for Elder Anthony Wilson, who also serves here as my second assistant. Uh, he is the president of our Vision Keepers Leadership uh, uh, Conference, and uh, he's doing a tremendous job, and I certainly do thank God for him. And we're excited about our guest who is going to be with us, Dr. Mark Ellis of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He is the president of our International Sunday school department and he is a tremendous leader an achiever a man of God and I'm excited about his, his being with us he's going to be with us Saturday he's going to be with us for both services Sunday and you're going to hear from this tremendous man of God and so it's on right here at the Upper Room Church of God of Christ January the 12th 14th and 15th that is the 12th the 14th and the 15th, and uh, you don't want to miss a moment, and uh, I'm excited about um, the, the, the launching uh, on tonight. Now, let me say this, let me say this, 
Uh, it seems to me, you know, we need the word of God and we need preaching and we need preachers and we need God's truth as never before because our society has gone wild. It's gone mad. Now, listen to this and, uh, and I'm, I'm going to wrap this up, but I just want to just weigh into this just a little bit and I want to weigh into it by reading, uh, Romans chapter number one, verse 21 and 22. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Their foolish hearts, the faculties of their abilities, their reasonings, their ability to think was darkened and professing themselves to be wise. They thought they were smart. They became fools. Now we're living in a day where there's this, we, we, we're trying to have a gender neutral transgender society. There are those who will actually tell you that there are no differences between men and women. You know, when we've been in battles about uh, who should attend what bathroom, there was actually people with a straight face who uh, who were educated, who were arguing that uh, that women, uh, uh, should, men should be allowed to use the women's restroom and women, uh, the men's restroom and uh, guys should be able to go into girls locker, locker room and 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 vice versa. And, and if, if a guy is messed up in his head and he thinks he's a girl, then he should be allowed to dress with the women and all that kind of stuff, so forth and so on. To the point where gender is not even an issue. Uh, we want a gender neutral society and all that kind of garbage, which we've said from the beginning, God made them male and God made them female. And, and, and by the way, the Bible teaches that the, the man is supposed to honor the woman. The Bible says giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. The Bible says he that loveth his wife loveth himself. And now when you study the scriptures, you see where men are supposed to hold women in high esteem. Amen. And to respect women because they are to be respected. The Bible even says that a man should not lay with mankind as with womankind. And Adam a man who had never committed a sin. God visited him every day. The voice of God would speak to him. Uh, Adam, born with a full vocabulary, walking from the day he was created. A man of superior intelligence. And yet the God of the Bible said concerning Adam in his sinless state, walking in perfection, God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. And I will make for for him an appropriate helper for him. And hey, Gary, you know, he made the woman and brought Eve to Adam. Adam saw Eve and said, whoa, now this is flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone. Her skin is like mine. Her flesh is like mine. She's like me, but different. And oh boy, uh, Adam loved the difference and Eve loved the difference. And the next thing I know, Adam knew Eve and she conceived and brought forth children and so forth and so on. And so we, we in the church, in the church world, in the church of God in Christ, in the body of Christ at large, we believe that there is a difference between the genders. We believe, like Paul teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that a man uh, shouldn't even uh, wear his hair like a woman. That, that The Bible is clear that, that there should be distinctions uh, between the genders. At a glance, you ought to be able to look and see that's a man. Or oh, that's a woman, you know, uh, the, the, the genders, the glory of the genders, uh, that their, their difference and how we how we complement each other. And I do know that I'm using a, a, a word that's being used that's out of place. Gender was originally a word to describe uh, uh, words, words. It's a grammatical term. The word that God gives us is the word male, female. Sex, the term that the sex is male and female, they too, male and female. So, so, but we're, we're in a day now where, you know, oh, anything that a woman can do, 
A man can do anything that a man can do, a woman can do better. And then you got these same-sex couples where the guy staying home, one guy staying home acting like a woman, while the other guy goes to work and they went and adopted two children. And so he's trying to act like uh, he's her mama. Uh, I, I tell you what, he's not a woman. It, 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 he's not a woman. He can't produce breast milk. He's not a woman. It's a man. And uh, 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 it's a disgrace and it's a sin before God. But we're trying to pretend that women that, you know, that these that, that these positions that the sexes are interchangeable, you know, they're interchangeable until Dana White slapped his wife back. She slapped him and he slapped her. And now uh, everybody's up in arms. And, and the other day on one of the sports TV shows, they closed the show by one lady saying, you know, a man should under, in no circumstances, hit a woman. Now, I agree with that. But before this happened, these same people are saying, oh, we... Listen, we, that, that's gender neutrality. We shouldn't be divided on gender. As a matter of fact, and, 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 and given the definition of woman now, when you say a man shouldn't hit a woman, uh, are you talking about a woman from the factory or a woman from the laboratory? The laboratory woman is a man who claims to be a woman. The woman from the factory is the female that God made. So uh, should the guy uh, deck the, the, the man who claims uh, to be a woman, if that man hits him, you know, uh, is, is that allowed? So do you, do you need to figure that out? What's my point? What is my point? My point is when men walk away from the biblical standard, people make fools of themselves. Of course, uh, a man should not uh, hit a woman. Uh, of course, uh, 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 what Dana White did was not proper. Uh, and I would go so far to say as uh, Mrs. White shouldn't have hit him. Uh, I, I believe that no, that, that with the husband and wife dynamic, people shouldn't hit each other. Uh, uh, and, and, and yet, and yet, even if the, if the wife does, I still say that the man should not retaliate in kind. Uh, the Bible teaches that we're not to retaliate in kind. But my point is, and for those who are paying attention, if you follow this ministry, you know what I'm talking about. All of this talk, I mean, they put the guy in the swimming and let him out swim all the women and called him a girl. You turn to these uh, news stations and the talking heads are talking to Bruce Jenner and calling Bruce a girl, calling him a she and all this crazy stuff until a man born from the factory slaps his wife, who's a female born from the factory. And he actually, he slapped her back again. I don't think that he should have. I do not endorse that. I think it is wrong. But a, a great argument is I thought that the, the darkened, foolish, imaginationed American populace and the world who are making fools of themselves, they're the ones who are telling us that there is no difference. And there's no difference until one gets slapped. Then you find out there's a difference. All right. I, <laughs> look. This is wooden being wooden, but you have to admit what I'm saying makes sense. In my clothes, I have been talking about this garbage that I have in my hand. A book entitled is perfectly normal. Ages 10 and up. This is porn. I have porn in my hand. Now for my friends who are watching this, please do not buy this book. I don't want to make a dime for the devil. I just want you to pray against it. I want you to pray against the authors. I want you to pray that God protects the minds of our 10 year old and up and, uh, and that books like this, uh, that they not be in the library. That they not be on the shelves of our public schools. That they not be placed into the hands of children whose little minds are filled with mush. The human brain doesn't stop develop developing in a human being till uh, in the 20s. So their minds are f developing and the devil want to put things before them that once they see these things, they cannot unsee them. It is so obscene that I could not 
uh, open the pages of this book and show it to you out of respect for my audience. So we're going to continue to pray that God, matter of fact, we're praying right now, Lord, stop this garbage in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you would rally people everywhere, everywhere to rise up and to speak against this kind of wickedness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go to cfad.org, 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 cfad, Christians Against Destructive Decisions, a movement uh, that's taking place uh, based in South Carolina, headed by uh, Superintendent Tommy Eugene Quick, my, my chief of staff, a tremendous man of God who's doing a tremendous work. They are fighting this book and others, and we want signatures, signatures, as they collect signatures, you can go and sign up no matter where you're from. It won't cost you a dime to, to give your signature to this effort. Now, why won't you do it? CFAD.org and sign and say, yes, we stand with CFAD. We stand with a uh, superintendent quick. We stand with Bishop Wood. We stand with the, the saints at Spartanburg Discipleship Center, Church of God in Christ. We stand with these leaders who are fighting against this wickedness. And my friends, we're praying for our children's minds, but we're fighting for them at the same time. Now, I've gone long and I've been going long a little bit lately, but I missed you. And, you know, last week I was out in Texarkana, Texas. We had a marvelous time at Acts 6, 4 conference. What a tremendous group of people they are. I love Brother Jason Stidham. I love M Mother Tennyson. I love uh, Pastor Josh Lee. Oh, my, he's going to be preaching for me soon a man of God who's pastoring a church that he stumbled into one day drunken and met Jesus. And now he's grown to be the pastor of that church and he's leading men and women to Christ. So many good things. There's so many good things. So meet me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ tonight for Bible study. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did that in a while. Good Bible study right here. And I'm going to be talking about the Vision Keepers Leadership Conference. I want you to tune in. I love you. I think I can still say Happy New Year, right, Gary? It's still okay. Happy New Year to you. Praise the Lord. It's going to be a year. And I want to send a big shout out to my leader. Thanks again, Bishop Sheard, for your love and for your words of encouragement uh, to this Christian warrior today. You're doing a tremendous job, man of God, and may the Lord continue to bless you and keep you and cause his face to ever shine upon you. God bless every one of you. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ.